the scripture today. See to it, brothers and sisters, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God, but encourage one another daily as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. We have come to share in Christ, and if indeed we hold our original conviction firmly to the end, as it has just been said, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion. And who were they that heard and rebelled? Were they not all those that Moses led out of Egypt? And with whom was he angry for 40 years? Was it not with those who sinned and whose bodies perished in the wilderness? And to whom did God swear that they would never enter his rest, if not to those who disobeyed? And so we see that they were not able to enter because of their unbelief. For the people of the Lord, praise be to God. Thank you. Would y'all bow your heads? Lord, may the meditation of our hearts and the words of my voice be pleasing to your sight. Amen. We have so many things pulling at us from every direction. We have the news media telling us what we should believe. We have our friends saying, hey, go do this. We have TV telling us, hey, this is the best new thing out there. But it's not always the right thing. There's all these things out there that are pulling us in these directions that are trying to get us to do things that we may not always agree with and may not always be what God wants for us. But it's still there. It's still nagging in the back of your mind. In the verses, we reference the Hebrews who followed Moses out of Egypt. Imagine, they saw the plagues, the worst plagues the earth had ever seen to that point. Locust, the rivers turning to blood, the death of the firstborn, then the parting of the Red Sea. How can you not believe in a God who can take and literally part the seas? But after times started getting longer, and the days weren't quite as easy as they thought it was going to be, the Hebrews started, you know, this may not be all it's cracked up to be. And in their hearts, they started to think, well, maybe God isn't here with us as he said he would be. And they started thinking about ways of going back to Egypt. Amazing. They've seen these magnificent sights but they're still thinking about sin, about the way of the world. What hope do we have? Imagine. We are told that the one who believes without seeing is the one that will be blessed. But here are people who saw it and don't actually believe it. How do we listen to all this noise around us and then go and go throughout our day and not want to sin? Because like the title says, sin is easy. It's out there. It's everywhere. And sin comes in so many different forms. The same sin for me may not be the same sin for you. I might have a problem with drinking. And me taking more than one drink is a bad thing, but for somebody else, they can probably drink all they want. Never give them a problem at all. Or the sin that is all wrong for all of us, adultery or idolism or any other name of sin you want to go with. But it's easy. We hear of people every day who choose that sin, who decide to go the wrong direction, who decide to take a way that's not laid out for them by God. Jesus came, he died for our sins. He died to take these sins away. 
but he never expected us to be perfect. Yes, we are called as Christians to live a certain way. We are called as Christians to act in certain ways. We are called to Christians as Christians to show others through us that Jesus Christ has saved us from our sins. But I love this one ver- uh, line in the verse. But encourage one another daily. Why would we need to be encouraged if we're going to be perfect? We don't have to be perfect. We will sin. It's going to happen. No matter what we try to do, we will sin because sin is easy. We may not think we're sinning at the time. It may be weeks, months, years later that we figure out, I was sinning. And that is not what God wanted me to do. That's the reason why. It doesn't say here to encourage the non-sinner. It doesn't say here to encourage the people who don't know about God. No, it says to encourage one another daily as long as it is called today. So when do we encourage everybody? Every moment, every second, every breath, every time we get up, every time we lay our heads down, every time we do anything. We're to encourage one another. Because I may be having a great day, but you may not. I may be on top of the world right now because I am actually standing in front of you. But you may go, be going through your own personal battles. Or I may be going through my own personal battle. I look fine in front of you. But in my mind, I'm broken. My mind... I am lost. In my mind, I need help, but I don't show it to anybody. That's the reason why we encourage people. Hey, great job. Hey, how are you doing today? Hey, remember, God loves you. It doesn't have to be anything major. It's like taking and meeting that veteran and saying, how are you doing today? Thank you for what you've done for me. That firefighter who we know just came from a fire where he had to rescue someone out of a burning building. Pat him on the back and say, hey, you did something I would never be able to do. You went in running when I was running out. Or that police officer who had to hear on the radio that one of his fellow brothers or sisters has fallen. And is thinking, why am I here? Why am I doing this? Or your own family who may be going through something so personal that they don't want you to know about. But inside it's tearing them apart. Making them wonder, why am I even trying to live a good life if all these people around me can do whatever they want? Because we know the one truth that Jesus came. He lived that sinless life and he died because of it. Because he wanted to take on the sins of the world onto his own shoulders where he could die in our place. Imagine the love that he has for us. For putting himself in our place, taking the responsibility for the sin and dying for it. Because he knew he would be back. He knew that he could take it. And he wanted us to be able to be closer to him, be closer to God, to be able to have that everlasting life that comes by the knowledge that we were sinners, but we are born again. It's amazing. So how can I go throughout my day and not sin? Again, it's not going to happen. You are going to sin. What we are, as Christians are asked to do is try to be the example. When we can, we take the, low, the road less traveled, the right way, not the easy way, however metaphor you want to use for the term. When we fail, we get down on our knees, figuratively. And we say, God, I am a sinner. I know I have sinned. I know I messed up. But I also know that you told me that there is no sin that you will not forgive. Because in your name, 
We have eternal life. We have this ability to get down, tell God, yes, I have sinned. I don't deserve it. I don't deserve to see you in heaven. I don't deserve to be able to one day stand in front of your grace and say, great are you. Because I'm nothing. He doesn't care. When I was growing up, I had two fantastic parents who taught me the right and wrong ways to live my life. I saw them fall from time to time, but I also saw them get back up. My dad had several sayings that we would use, and one of them is that it doesn't matter how many times you fall, it's how many times you pick yourself up. My mother's way of you know, putting these little stories in my head was a little bit different. I went to college in the mid-90s, went to TSTC, it's Texas State Technical College in Waco, Texas little bitty school, and instead of a dorm situation, they actually had four bedroom apartments. And I lived with three other teenage guys, and as teenage guys do, we talk really badly. We use words that will make your mother blush. And I got so used to doing this that I came home and was talking the same way until I felt a slap across the back of my head. And I went, oh, right, I'm not supposed to talk like that. My dad's way was to encourage me not to do it, by his example. Mom's way was to slap me in the back of the head and let me know that I'm doing wrong. And I'm going to tell you, I needed both ways at certain times in my life. I needed that slap across the back of the head to put it in my uh, knowledge, um, yeah, I really need to stop doing that. As Christians, we can encourage others both ways. We don't have to slap them across the back of the head. It may be necessary, but we don't have to. We can take and encourage them by showing them what we can do. We don't just encourage the non-believer. We encourage the believer to keep going when the times are rough. Because I'm going to tell you right now, if you're looking for a religion that's easy, this isn't it. The outside world has put a big cross on us and said, hey, we want to attack them. It may not always be out in the open like it is in some other countries, but we are being attacked. But we can hold strong. We can do the right thing. And then when we mess up, we can get down on our knees again and say, God, I'm sorry. I messed up. Sometimes I know we won't feel like we deserve that forgiveness. There'll be times when you may fall so far away from God that you get out of Christianity. I did it. There was about a five-year period where I could care less about going to church. I could care less about thinking about what God wanted for me there's this whole world out there to explore and I wanted to enjoy every bit of it. Then I got slapped across the back of the head. It's one of those times I needed that slap. Got slapped by the back of the head a couple different ways. My dad got sick. A man that I had loved all my life that I thought of as my superman had kryptonite. Within one week, he went from being a perfectly healthy 70-something-year-old person to being in a hospital bed dying. And I lost my dad. A couple years later, my mom had surgery, and her organs decided to start shutting down. Many of you actually probably remember that time. And it's only through I know God's prayers that she got better. She got better. She came back to us. We got a few more years. And then she got sick again. She got sick, had cancer. She found out January 1st, January 19th, she passed away from this earth. That's been a couple years now. 
This verse stuck out to me so much when I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do for this week. Because it says here, as long as it's called today. We do not know what tomorrow is going to bring. Any one of us can be here today and gone tomorrow. COVID, the flu, driving down Highway 46. (laughs) We have so much in this world that can cause us not to be here tomorrow. So why worry about tomorrow when we have today? Take today to encourage others. Take today to stop and smell the roses. Take today to call your family members that you may not have talked to in a while and say, hey, I love you. Because tomorrow is not promised. Today is. Do all this today and know that He is God and He is good. And know that no matter what you do, about those days when you do fall away, you can come back. Because He will forgive you. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son that whosoever believeth in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. My promise is in heaven. My promise is that one of these days I will see my mother and father again. My promise is that I will be able to stand in front of God, raise my hands up and hold my head up tall, say, Lord, I did everything I could for you when I was here. You still forgave me when I didn't. Yes, this world has so much in it that's fantastic, amazing, and it may be considered sin, but it's fleeting. It'll be here today, but it won't be here tomorrow. But with God, we know that today we may lose our life, but tomorrow we will be standing in heaven. What greater gift than we could ask for. I know I've used a lot of metaphors and a lot of sayings that my father and my mom have said or sayings that probably every one of you have heard. But we choose what is right over what is easy and sin is easy. We are Christians. We are not perfect. We are Christians. We are not the ones who get to judge other people. We are not the ones who get to go out there and say, I am better than you because I am a Christian. No. I am here to tell you that you can be with God too. That is who we are. That is who we need to strive to be every day. And this is one time when, yes, it is good to look forward. Don't be a Christian today and not tomorrow. Don't be a Christian today and not next week. Don't be a Christian today and not next year. Because guess what? If you are not a Christian every day, the promises will not be kept. We're going to get there in heaven and he's going to look at us and go, who are you? That is something I don't want to happen. So every day when I lay my head down on that bed, the last thing I'm going to do is say, God, please forgive me. I know I messed up. I know I was wrong. I didn't do what you would have wanted me to every second of this day. But I hope that I did something that showed somebody else that you're here, that you're standing right beside them, and that you will always be there. Let us pray. Our most gracious and heavenly Father, we thank you for your promise that no matter what we do, we can ask forgiveness and all will be forgiven. You let yourself be put on a cross and to die for my sins, for the sins of the world, for the sins who, for the sins of people who weren't even born yet. You have been there in the bad times and you are there in the good times. You were always with me and you're always with 
every Christian and every person who calls on your name. Let us always remember to be that shining example of who you want us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.